When it comes to smartwatches, you have a lot of options. We're comparing Apple's to Samsung's on features like design, health and fitness tracking, and connectivity. This is Apple Watch Series 4 versus Samsung Galaxy Watch. Let's start with design. The obvious difference is that the Galaxy has a round screen while the Apple Watch is square. The Galaxy is thicker, so it sticks out on your wrist more than the Apple Watch. Both come in different sizes, either a 42 or a 46 mm version of the Galaxy Watch, or a 40 or 44 mm for the Apple Watch. For the Galaxy Watch, you have the choice of either black or silver, plus an additional rose gold option in the smaller model, while the Apple Watch also comes in silver, space gray, and gold. To make your watch more personal, you can change and customize the Galaxy Watch with many third-party faces, while the Apple Watch has a more limited selection. And both are water resistant to 50 meters. I love the analog look of the Galaxy Watch. That said, the Apple Watch is still super, super customizable because of how easy it is to swap out the wristbands. And I find myself uh, using different ones to kind of change the look, whereas the Galaxy Watch, it's just harder um, to get that strap out, so I end up sticking to the same one. I love the screen, the Super AMOLED on the Galaxy Watch looks it's really bright, it's easy to see in sunlight, and that bezel, oh, that tactile response of just being able to turn it and navigate and also just play with it, it's just a nicer way to interact with the device than that digital crown on the Apple Watch, at least for me. The Galaxy Watch is compatible with both Android and iOS devices, while the Apple Watch is tied exclusively to the Apple ecosystem. As you'd expect, both can mirror most notifications from your phone, and there are plenty of third-party apps available on both. Both also let you tap into payments from your wrist using Apple Pay and an NFC-only version of Samsung Pay. But if you want to leave the phone at home, they do have GPS built in, as well as an LTE version that costs extra. At the time of recording, the cheapest Galaxy Watch is $280 in the US and another $70 for LTE. But the cheapest Series 4 is $400. Add $100 more to get LTE. So there's something about the interface on the Apple Watch that I still take a lot of time to figure out. Like, I don't know when I turn the crown, I don't know when to press the button or the other button. The Galaxy Watch, on the other hand, just a couple of days and I feel like I, I'm a pro at the interface. Like, I know where to find everything, I know what the buttons do. It's just easier to pick up. And then it comes to the voice assistant, Laura. Let's just say I was being polite about Siri on the Apple Watch, not being, I guess, as fully fledged as Siri on the iPhone. And then I tried Bixby on the Galaxy Watch and that was a big letdown because all I could do is check the weather and she sounds like this. The sun is shining today. What I do like about the Galaxy Watch, though, is that it's so customizable right from the watch face itself. You can just drag and drop widgets, rearrange, um, get rid of some on the go. It also has more watch faces to choose from because it has that watch face store. Um, what I will say was a disappointment was the fact that Samsung Pay doesn't work like how it works on the Samsung phones because it doesn't have that MSD chip that allows it to work on any terminal, so you're stuck with NFC, just like the Apple Watch with Apple Pay. Please, second generation, like let's make MST a thing. While we're at it on generation two, something about the Galaxy Watch that does drive me up the wall is that raise to wake sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. I'd say like seven times out of 10, it's fine. And then that three times out of 10, I just, I can't get it to work. The Apple Watch on the other hand works consistently every single time. You still have to be quite violent though with both of them <laughs> where you're like, <sighs> See, it didn't work. See, it didn't work that time. Yeah. Also, also, what's with the phantom vibrations? I feel like I haven't quite gotten why it's nudging me. It just wants to get to know. I don't know. Really like, like there's no notifications pending, so I'm like, what do you want? It's a phantom in your yes. watch. <laughs> These watches go all out when it comes to fitness features. The Apple Watch has 14 workout types built in, while the Galaxy Watch has 39. Both also let you track more workouts under the other category. If you forget to start a workout, both give you an alert when it automatically detects that you've started one. The Apple Watch only detects certain activities like indoor and outdoor running and walking, but only the Galaxy Watch auto detects cycling. Apart from your basic activity tracking, both have added health features. The Apple Watch has an FDA-cleared EKG feature. Plus, it lets you know when there's something abnormal about your heart. It sends you a notification when your heart rate is too high, too low, or if it detects an irregular rhythm that could signal atrial fibrillation. It also has fall detection. 
The Galaxy Watch uses the heart rate sensor for fitness and for tracking your stress levels, and it's the only one you can use to track your sleep. It breaks down the duration and quality of your sleep. Aside from the extremely helpful Find My Phone feature, what I use these watches for the most are fitness features. And I can say that they both do a really good job at tracking activity. They show you all the stats that you'd probably want to see. I like that the Apple Watch shows you more stats on one screen while you run, um, whereas the Galaxy Watch, you have to swipe. I like seeing them all at once. Um, I also, I'm very responsive to the ring system that the <laughs> Apple Watch has. It's just visual. It makes you close rings that you've, th those goals that you've set for yourself at the end of the day. And I find that myself pushing myself harder just because I'm obsessive about closing rings. I'm not as obsessed <laughs> with the rings as you are. I have to say, I don't feel really bad if I don't close them on one day, for example. But I'm glad you bring up that point about information because the problem for me is not on the screens, is that information I think is totally fine on the watch screens. It's when I want to track my progress over time and I pull that information in from the first party apps. Apart from the Galaxy Watch having two apps and the Apple Watch having three, apart from not knowing where to look to find that, I find it really difficult to know how I'm making progress over time. Say, for example, if I'm running the same route every week, am I getting better in terms of my speed, in terms of segments that I'm running? Uh, how is my pace doing? Like, I need to know this information and you have to basically pull it out and work it out yourself. There's no easy way to find that within those first party apps, which is something that third party apps, of course, are really good at. But I would love to see the next generation of these apps and watches have a little bit more of that progress tracking built in. The Apple Watch lets you stream or store your tunes from Apple Music directly to the watch and listen to podcasts. You can also use third-party apps like Spotify, but you'll get more basic functionality. The Galaxy Watch has better Spotify support, so you can download playlists to listen to offline if you're a premium subscriber. And the Galaxy also lets you transfer songs from your computer when they're on the same Wi-Fi network. We tested the smaller versions of both these watches side by side to see how long the batteries would hold up. During normal use and with a workout in between, we found the Apple Watch lasted about a day and a half. The Galaxy Watch will give you about a day more battery. But the larger version of the Galaxy Watch claims to last up to four days. This is by no means a scientific test and your battery mileage may vary. What is clear is that you will be having to charge both these watches on a regular basis. So with that in mind, Vanessa, it's crunch time. Are you choosing the Apple Watch or the Galaxy Watch? This is a tough one because this one is so pretty, it's distracting my choice, but ultimately I think I'm gonna have to go to the, with the Apple Watch because of the fitness features. What about you? So you're fitness first, I'm hybrid of smartwatch and fitness features first. I, I think they both do an excellent job on this front and the Galaxy Watch has really grown on me. I didn't expect to love it as much as I do and now I think it's gonna be really hard to take off. With that in mind, there are a couple of things that it doesn't do quite as well. But right now, if I had to buy one, and of course I was an iPhone user, I would choose the Apple Watch. But I love the Android and iOS compatibility on the Galaxy Watch. That's great. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Leave your comments on the comment section below and hit us up on Twitter and come back for more verses on CNET.com.